Have you ever had a student write a story or even just tell you a story but they're missing some key details? I once had a boy tell me he was so sad because his brother had just gotten a bunch of new toys that his parents got him and he wasn't allowed to have any of them. He said he didn't have any toys. His brother got all of these new toys but he didn't have any and I was starting to feel really bad for this poor boy when I started to ask him more questions and it turns out it was his brother's birthday. That's pretty a pretty important detail to include in the story. And that happens a lot, especially in kindergarten and first grade. They're still not sure which details are important to, to use in their stories. That's why oral storytelling is so important in these grades. And I'm going to show you one of the ways that I love to practice storytelling skills with my students at the beginning of the year. A lot of the skills that they use in oral storytelling, they're going to use later on in their writing. Skills like story elements, story language, um, word choice, organization, and details or elaboration. So I love to practice by retelling re the read-alouds that I read in class. And today I'm going to show you how I do that using the book Chalk by Bill Thompson, which is one of my favorite books. It's also a wordless book, which is great to for kindergarten because they can see that you can tell a story through pictures. Let me know in the comments if you've read this book to your students or if you've used it for retelling as well. So if you're not familiar with this book, it is about a few kids who go to a playground and they find a box of chalk and whatever they draw on the ground comes to life. So the first little girl draws a sun, which comes to life. Then they draw some butterflies and next the boy draws a dinosaur. So the dinosaur comes to life and starts chasing them around and he has a great idea of uh, drawing some rain to wash the dinosaur away. So whenever I read a wordless book to my students, the first thing I like to do is just show them the pictures without saying anything. We don't talk, we, we don't share our ideas. I just tell them to look at the pictures and think about what's happening and think and tell themselves a story in their head. So I'll go through it without saying a word. And then the second time we go through each picture talking about what we're seeing and talking about the story. And now it's time to sequence the story. And when we sequence the story, we don't have to go into too many, too many details. I like to keep it simple and just say the important things that happen in the story. But you'll see in the next step that we make it a little bit more fun and we add lots of details to it. So I'm going to use these cards, which I actually included in your free download for this story. But I have the background on a pocket chart and then the students help me sequence the cards to, to retell the story. So I might say one day three kids went to a playground and they found a box of chalk and the first little girl drew a sun on the ground and the sun came to life and went in the sky then the next little girl decided to draw some butterflies and the butterflies also came to life and flew in the sky and the little boy drew a dinosaur and the dinosaur came to life and started chasing the kids around the playground so the boy decided to draw some rain and the rain washed the dinosaur away and they were able to escape. Now that we've sequenced the story, I like to have the visuals here so students can re refer back to them if they forget. But now it's time for the fun part. We're going to act it out as we retell the story. Now, as we act it out and retell the story, we're going to add movements, which help the kids remember the story and makes it more fun. And we're also going to revise. So we're going to talk about word choice. We're going to talk about story language and we're going to add transition words. So it might sound a little bit like this. One day, three little kids went to the playground. So how can we act that out? Can we go like this? Okay. They went to the playground and they found a box of chalk what can we say about the chalk it's colorful they found a box of colorful chalk now let's start again one day three little kids went to the playground and they found a box of colorful chalk what happened next that's right then a little girl decided to draw a sun can we do this for drawing a sun and what happens the sun comes to life and goes in the sky Okay, so so far we have one day three little kids went to the playground and found a box of colorful chalk. A little girl draws a sun and it comes to life and goes in the sky. What happened next? Next little girl drew some butterflies. Okay, the next little girl drew some, what can we say about the butterflies? Beautiful butterflies and they also came to life and flew. 
Now, can we think of a better word than flu? Think about how butterflies move. What's a, what's a fancy word for flu? How about fluttered? Yes. Okay, so let's start again. One day, three little kids, and I'm just going to finish the story for you, but you get the idea. One day, three little kids went to the playground and found a box of colorful chalk. The little girl took a chalk and drew a sun, which came to life and went into the sky. Then the next little girl drew some beautiful butterflies, and they came to life and fluttered in the sky. Next, a boy decided to draw a dinosaur. Now he drew some sharp teeth and sharp claws, and when the dinosaur came to life, it roared, roar, and started chasing the kids around the playground. But then he had a good idea. He drew some rain, and the rain washed away the dinosaur chalk. Now we do this whole group several times and then I like to break them up into groups of two and they practice retelling and acting out the story to one another. And the more that they do it, the better they get and the more details that they add. Lots of times students will add even more details and even more movements. And at the end, if we have time, I'll even ask them to come up to the front of the class and act it out for the, for the whole class. Now after we do this, I have another activity to follow up. And I have two versions of, the, versions of this actually. The kids cut apart the pieces here and they can use it on the background here to practice acting out the story as well. I have another version where if you fold it, it actually pops up like a little stage and that's a lot of fun. I'm gonna put this in your freebie too so you can do everything that I did here today with your students. So after they act it out, they can glue the pieces here. It has transition words and they can take it home and practice retelling the story to somebody at home. And then they, they write the ending here. Now you can do this with any book, well most books. I like to use books that have a clear beginning, middle, and end to make it a little bit easier for students to retell. I have a blog post with picture books that are perfect for sequencing and retelling because they have uh, story, clear story elements and I will link that in the description box below. I hope that this video was helpful for you and that you got some great ideas on how to support your students in becoming storytellers, which later on will help them with writing. Let me know in the comments if you'll try anything out and let me know how it goes. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next video.